What is going on everybody? So as you can see, we have my full Nintendo Switch collection. Now this will probably be the last Switch collection uh, video that I do on the channel because next year we are anticipating that the Nintendo Switch uh, 2 or successor is going to be coming out. So this will probably be the last one. Uh, make sure y'all check out my last Switch collection from last year so you can kind of like compare and see like what I've added, what's different, what I've gotten rid of, everything like that. But if you're new to the channel, you like gaming news, gaming reviews, collection videos, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, we cover everything here on Mansa XP, so please consider subscribing. And speaking of subscribing, we are giving away a Nintendo 64 controller for a Nintendo Switch. If you wanna play online or you can just use it, um, we're giving that away as soon as I hit a thousand subscribers. So please make sure you do like this video, leave a comment on your favorite Nintendo 64 video, uh, video game, and then make sure you do subscribe and then we'll give that away. But without further ado, let's get into the collection. So let's start with some accessories. So the first accessory we're gonna talk about is this. Every Nintendo Switch owner needs this, especially for traveling. This is a carrying case. It is Breath of the Wild themed. I've had it since I've had a Switch for around five years now. So you open it up, you pretty much, you can leave your Switch in here, you can leave your controllers or games in here. And then it also comes with these little cases. It comes with two of these. You could fit four games each inside. So that's a little cool. Uh, I've used it, you know, on trips, work trips, play on the airplane, everything like that. So definitely need something nice and sturdy to protect your Switch. Next up, we have this game case that looks just like a Pokedex. So this holds, I think it's 24 games. Yeah, 24 games. So I have them completely filled out. This isn't enough for me, but if you're not like a huge collector, or if you have the case that I mentioned earlier, you know, you could fit 24 in here and then you could fit another eight in there for a total of 32. So, um, <laughs> I mean, if you don't really buy physical, you buy digital, or you leave your games in your cases, you probably won't need all that. But if you do, you could check it out. Bought this on Amazon. Next up for accessories, it's actually on the back of my Switch, which is the Satisfy Grip. So I do recommend everyone gets some type of grip when you're playing your Switch. It just makes everything easier. You know, your hands start falling asleep when you're playing and stuff like that. So getting a nice grip and Satisfy is a, you know, a, a good company. They have a bunch of different grips, some that have extra like shoulder buttons and different, like you could slide the game slot in if you don't feel like carrying around a case, you can add a few games to carry along with you. So definitely recommend getting that grip. And then since I already have the Switch in my hand, we can talk about it. This is the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom OLED edition. So I did go ahead and grab one. I didn't think an OLED was really worth it, like worth the upgrade, but I did want a Legend of Zelda theme because I've never had one. I never had a Zelda Game Boy or DS or anything. So I ended up selling my old Switch for like a little over $200 and then was able to buy this. So I think it was well worth the money, but definitely recommend uh, getting the, they, I don't know if they're still available, but I see them come in and out of stock all the time. So I've had it since Tears of the Kingdom came out and I definitely recommend it. All right, now let's get into the controller. So I have a few controllers right here. This hasn't been opened yet because I just got it, but it is the original NES classic controller. So what's cool is when you order this, they actually give you two. I didn't know that, which is good. So it kind of encourages that classic, you know, couch co-op, you know, what people used to play together, um, you know, multiplayer. So I think that's good. Then you also have what I mentioned earlier, Nintendo 64. So we're giving one away. I also have one of my own. So that's good. Like, I think it's fun to, you know, when you play Nintendo Switch online, you can play the original way that these games were intended to be played. Like playing Ocarina of Time with an Nintendo 64 controller is just, there's nothing more nostalgic than that. Speaking of that, we do have what fell earlier with the classic Super Nintendo controller. So I pretty much have every controller for uh, the Nintendo Switch Online except the Genesis controller because I don't really care for that, right? Like, I don't, like, I didn't want to just get it, like, oh, I complete the size. Like, I, I literally am never 
playing Genesis games, so I didn't feel the need to do that. Now moving on to some pro controllers, I do have the Tears of the Kingdom controller, definitely nice. Um, the thing I like about the pro controllers is like they're way more comfortable than just like joy cons and they feel like some of those like classic controllers and you can use them for pretty much every game right so originally i had this controller right here which is actually a power a controller which is zelda theme and i thought this was a pro controller the only reason i figured out that it wasn't a pro controller was because i kept trying to look up rechargeable batteries for a pro controller and this never had any way to get rechargeable batteries and i realized it was a power a controller so ended up not really using it anymore but it's still you know good to have so we got enough controllers in the house for anybody to play anything they want to play and now let's get into what's going to take the longest part of the video, but what everybody likes to see, which is the actual game. So these, let's start with these right here, this giant double pack right here. This is um, No More Heroes 1 and 2. Now I do have No More Heroes 3, but it's on the PS5. And the reason was that was, I wanted to get the special edition. Um, I would like to have the complete set on the Nintendo Switch, but that's, uh, I'll take the special edition over just keeping uh, everything on the same system. So that's what it is. Now moving on to these games right here, this stack. So starting from the top, we have Metroid Prime Remastered that just came out earlier this year. And I'll be honest, I'm not a big Metroid Prime fan. Like I thought, you know, maybe growing up since it wasn't big for me, like I would probably get into it uh, now that's remastered or anything, but it's just, I don't know. There's something about it's not clicking with me. Like it's not, like, I know everybody else loves it, but it's just, it's okay to me. It's not that great. Next, right under that, we have another Metroid game, which is Metroid Dread. And now a lot of people, this got a lot of people more into Metroid. This, um, I think it's the best-selling game in the franchise. So Metroid Dread is that, you know, I can't even say Metroidvania because it's literally what it came from. But, um, yeah, it's more that... 2D uh, or 2.5D action game. So definitely recommend picking this one up. Then under that, you got Shin Megami Tensei 5. Now this is considered the best in the series. I've yet to really dive into it. I've been meaning to, but it just, I, all these, these JRPGs take so much time, but I definitely need to, you know, sit down and actually pick this one up. Next, we have Near Automata or Automata, however you want to say it, uh, in the Yura edition. And this is, you've probably seen people cosplaying this all the time, people talking about this game all the time, and it's really good. Um, I haven't gotten too far into the game. I got further on my Xbox when I was on Game Pass, but I never finished it before I left. So I did pick it up on Switch and it looks really good. This is a really good port, a nice um, action JRPG. So if you're in the market for one, you can pick it up probably for like 25 30 bucks next up we have the very disappointing pokemon violet and unfortunately this i i got two badges in this game i just never got any further it's just like i think i've outgrown pokemon man and then with all the issues and glitches and bugs and all this and the frame rate drops and all that i just i just couldn't finish it maybe one day especially since the dlc just came out but definitely not anytime soon then we might as well get the other pokemon games out of the way so we got pokemon shining diamond or sorry brilliant diamond and then pokemon sword so i never played um sword and shield when they came out um and this was kind of like when violet was coming out and the 3ds shop was shutting down i was just like oh let me get all the generations so i can you know be able to trade and get all the pokemon i want on my switch with pokemon home and everything but again two games i had I just haven't gotten into. I mean, I bought them two years ago, or sorry, I bought them last year when Violet was coming out and I just, I don't know, Pokemon just not pulling me anymore, man. Next up, we have Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Now, this is a series I've just been hearing about for so many years and I really want to get into it. I'm happy they did release this because I didn't play the original Wii version, but um, again, another game, JRPG, pretty long that I need to actually sit down and take the effort to get into but xenoblade definitely looking forward to getting into the series next up we have legend of zelda uh hyrule warriors Cal the age of calamity again another warriors game that um 
I haven't, I don't think I've played it yet. I probably played a little bit, but there was some frame rate issues when I was playing. Like when there was a lot of enemies on the screen, it was just too many, like it was too much for me. But again, I think apparently it has some story tie-ins to Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. So I'll, at some point I will get into this. Next up, we got The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. So this game did come out back on the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color. And I actually had it on the 3DS for the, uh, I think it was called the Virtual Console or whatever. And I never beat it on the 3DS, but I was happy they did re-release this. We're hoping they'll do this for like Oracle Seasons, maybe Minish Cap or some other old 2D games they'll bring the Switch. But I definitely enjoyed it. I beat it in like probably like a week or two. So I thought it was pretty good. I would like to go back to it, but we'll see. Hopefully they do a uh, link between worlds at some point. Next up, we got Luigi's Mansion 3. Now this is a game that caught a lot of people you know by surprise it's been selling a lot i think it's passed over like 10 or 15 million copies already now i never played luigi's mansion on the gamecube because i never had a gamecube um or the 3ds um but i was enjoying it it looks amazing i just i might have to restart the game because it's one of those games where it's like if you don't play for a while and then you try to jump back in you're lost on what your objectives are and everything like that so i might have to restart this but definitely recommend picking this one up next we got everyone's favorite <laughs> switch game that just keeps selling we have super mario kart uh or sorry mario kart 8 deluxe not much more needs to be said mario kart a million courses and characters it just keeps on going next up we have donkey kong country tropical freeze now i did have throwing kong country returns on the 3ds i never beat that tropical freeze is pretty challenging i'm not gonna lie i still haven't beat this game like i've been trying i think i'm on like this third world maybe or second world i haven't beat the boss yet but donkey kong country is one of my favorite games from the super nintendo so i was definitely happy that they continued this i mean but this game's almost 10 years old at this point it came out on the wii u originally i believe so we it's, it's definitely time for a new donkey kong game next up we have the game that made me get a switch and that is super smash brothers ultimate and i've talked about smash brothers a million times on the channel but it's just that game that in college me and my friends just played a absurd amount especially on the uh the wii u and the uh what do you call it the 3ds and even brawl on the wii like but when ultimate came out i was just like i need a switch like i, I need it this game brought in every character from every game it added a ton of dlc characters sora joker like it just added a lot so super smash Bros. ultimate i'm excited to see what they do with the franchise maybe it'll be a reboot we'll have to see then we have the legend of zelda breath of the wild and this was a game that it took me a minute to be it took until tears of the kingdom came out for me to actually beat this game Zelda is my favorite franchise of all time. Either that or Sonic. It goes back and forth. And the way they changed everything, I just couldn't get into. I wasn't in, into open world RPGs. I wasn't into cooking. I wasn't into all that kind of stuff. So when they changed this game and not made it linear, I just like, I kept trying. I probably put in like 10 hours over the course of five years. But then when Tears of the Kingdom came out, I was like, I got to finish it. So I did put in 55 hours, ended up actually loving it. And then Tears of the Kingdom right after was like, the cherry on top so i don't think i can go back to this after playing tears of the kingdom but definitely a great game i, I get the hype now next up we have the best 3d mario with super mario odyssey and this game was just super creative the whole cappy features where you turn into different not even just animals or enemies you could turn into like you could possess a, like a car or like inanimate objects and just do it and the great platforming the fact that you run around and collect the power moons and you don't have to keep going back into the level to get them like how super mario 64 was but definitely looking forward to next 3d mario i don't know what they'll do to try and top this but hopefully they'll you know we trust nintendo to figure something out next we have sonic origins plus so this was a game that came with the original classic uh sonic games as well as uh added amy as a playable character and some game gear titles so definitely a good pickup for around like i think 30 or 40 bucks now to the next stack see we have a lot of games here <laughs> um we have super mario 
RPG. So make sure you guys check out my review I just did on this game. I never played it when it was on a Super Nintendo, but when it came to the Switch, I decided to pick it up. I thought it was cool. Obviously, it's a little dated with some of the RPG mechanics, but I think they did a good job with like the story, the little jokes, the mechanics and everything. And it's obviously timeless and influential on a lot of RPGs that we play today. Next up, we have another Sonic game with Sonic Superstars. Now, this game came out at a bad time with Super Mario Odyssey and, or sorry, Super Mario uh, Wonder and i thought it was cool um like it was regular sonic you know it was cool um the chaos emerald powers was pretty cool but i don't know it was it was just okay it was just okay next up we have star ocean the second story r so this is a remake of the second star ocean game by square enix and i haven't gotten to it yet i do plan on it i want to do either this or octopath traveler 2 next but um, yeah, it's, it has that, that new HD 2D style that Square Enix has been putting out and it definitely looks awesome. Next up with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming out, I did pick up Crisis Course. I do wanna play this before Rebirth comes out. I did play Final Fantasy VII Remake, but to get that full story, I made sure to get uh, Crisis Core. I seen videos, they said it's actually a good port on the Switch, so I definitely decided to pick that one up just to complete the whole uh, experience of Final Fantasy VII. Next up, we got Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Now, this was a lot of people's game of the year. Um, it really took that Super Mario, new Super Mario Brothers formula that we've been getting and kind of like flipped it. People was getting tired of it, it was getting stale. And the inclusion of the Wonder Flowers, the new power-ups, everything like that, where you didn't know what the what level was gonna do, would turn into. Definitely like this game. This was really good, uh, solid Super Mario game. And it's probably been the best one since Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. Next up we have Tunic, which is kind of like a love letter to classic 2D Zelda. I've been playing it on the Xbox for Game Pass, but I did want to get it on Switch too. It came with this nice, cool holographic, uh, you know, cover and yeah, tuning, solid game. Next up, we have the game that keeps coming out or having spinoffs, <laughs> and that's Persona 5 Royal, which is a lot of people's favorite RPG of all time. I know it's pretty long, pause, like a hundred or some hours. I haven't dug into it yet but again adding it to the backlog of jrpgs i need to get into but classic uh title from atlas and sega then we have another pokemon game with pokemon legends Arceus. so this was a nice switch up uh from the original pokemon formula i need to get back into this because i was actually enjoying it um just being able to play differently you know actually roam this was what we imagined as kids when we thought about playing pokemon so pokemon legends Arceus. if you haven't tried it out yet yeah, definitely pick it up it's a nice switch up from the original uh pokemon formula then we have what's probably going to be my game of the year and that is the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom as i mentioned breath of the wild wasn't my jam but when i kept seeing videos of this and the new mechanics and the fuse and ultra hand and all that i just decided to plunge in run through Breath of the Wild and then ran through this and I spent almost, I think it was like 101 hours on this thing. So definitely check out my review on this game as well. So I talk about it more in depth. Next, we got Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Another game I need to get back into, but it's cool. Switches up the Kirby formula a little bit. It's not just side scrolling. It's a full, you know, 3D game. You have the new uh, modes where Kirby has, I forget what it's called. It's like full mouth mode or something like that. Something palsy for sure. But, you know, we'll inhale like a car, you'll turn into that or a giant traffic cone. So. Kirby, if you're looking for a nice uh, switch up from the original 2D scrolling, definitely check this one out. Then we have the game I mentioned earlier, Octopath Traveler 2. And this is going on sale recently and I got it full price. But um, this is a game you play as eight different characters and I believe their stories kind of intertwine. So again, that HD 2D style from Square Enix and I'm looking forward to trying this one next. Then we have another Hyrule Warriors game. This is the original. This is the definitive edition from Koei Tecmo and Team Ninja. Um, I think this originally came out on the Wii U, but they did have a definitive edition with all the characters and DLC that came out for the Switch. So I thought this was a good 
game to have in the collection. Then I've also been trying to get into the Tale series after Tales of Rise. I got Berseria, Symphonia, and then I also got Vesperia on the Switch. So the Tales of Games Legendary series, again, JRPG, um, that, you know, action that I've been wanting to get more into some of these series. So I decided to get Tales of Vesperia, and this is a definitive edition for the Nintendo Switch. Then we have Cadence of Hyrule. This is a long title. I got to read it. It's like Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necro Dancer featuring the Legend of Zelda. So this is a game that um, I think Crypt of the Necro Dancer was, it's a rhythm based game. And then they were able to partner with Nintendo and then do a Zelda version of the game. So it's basically you move on a grid and your attacks are based on the rhythm of the songs and they're like remixes of Zelda songs. So after Hi-Fi Rush, this was a game that I definitely wanted to check out because it's Zelda theme and then I'm getting more into the rhythm based combat game. So Cadence of Hyrule, definitely look it up. Next, we got another HD 2D game and that is Live Alive. So this was actually a Square Enix game from, I think it came out in like the 90s, like 94 or something, but it never came over in America. And same thing as Octopath where you play as eight different characters and you know that each of their stories and timelines are different but then they come together at some point so definitely looking forward to get into this game and then the last two games we have are Nino Kuni 1 and Nino Kuni 2 Wrath of the uh I'm sorry Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch and Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom Prince Edition so these are games that you see that Studio Ghibli style made by published by Bandai Namco, developed by Level 5, and again, some more action RPGs that I wanted to get into. I've been hearing nothing but good words around it, cool art style, great story, so definitely need to, again, sit down and play through all these JRPGs at some point. And there you have it, guys. That is my full Nintendo Switch collection. I don't really see too many games coming out for the Switch that I'll probably pick up at this point. I think this is it. I'll probably try and finish all these. And then the uh, Switch 2 will begin that announcement in the next few months, maybe four, five, six months. So definitely look forward to that. But I appreciate you guys as always. Like I said, don't forget our giveaway for the Nintendo 64 controller for the Switch. So make sure you do like, subscribe, leave a comment on your favorite Nintendo 64 game. Leave a comment on your favorite Switch game that I pulled out. And but thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next video.